According to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, more than 1 million employees in the UK are exposed to levels of noise that could result in noise-induced hearing loss. The first step in complying with the law and controlling the risk is to establish if there are any noise-generating processes in the workplace by conducting a preliminary assessment. A good indication of excessive noise is if your employees have to raise their voices to have a normal conversation when two meters apart for at least part of the day. A more detailed survey should then be carried out to assess the typical exposures of each group of workers. This is usually done using a sound level meter in combination with measurements from decimeters that provide a more accurate personal exposure. The detailed survey will collect four key noise level measurements that you should have a basic understanding of. The science of noise measurement can be complicated, but to simplify things, this is all you need to know. A-weighted average noise levels replicate a human ear's response to noise. Therefore, much of the regulation actions are based on this value. C-weighted average noise level is filtered to a lower degree than A-weighted and therefore will always be higher. It can be used to select hearing protection. C-peak noise is the maximum decibel level associated with sudden crashes or bangs. It is an important measurement as peak sound can cause immediate long-term damage to the ear. Octave band frequency analysis is an important measurement when selecting hearing protection as it records the noise intensity at a range of individual frequencies. Using the noise level data collected, each work area can then be classified as either requiring hearing protection to be worn or hearing protection provided and worn voluntarily or no hearing protection controls are needed at all. The noise levels at which controls should be put in place by law are greater than 80 decibels for A average noise or greater than 135 decibels for C peak noise. Above these levels, you are required to implement a hearing conservation program, which will involve the following. Assigning responsibilities for the management of hearing protection, implementation of hearing protection zones and placement of signage, actioning any controls to reduce noise levels, selecting and providing hearing protection devices, starting a health surveillance program for all staff exposed to A average noise greater than 85 decibels, providing staff and responsible person training, keeping records of any noise data. Hearing protection devices play a key role in preventing noise-induced hearing loss. Therefore, selecting the correct device is important. Every hearing protector has its own unique spectrum of noise reduction that should be matched against the noise levels within your workplace. To make things more complicated, there are three ways in which hearing protection can be selected, as follows. The SNR method, which requires the measured C average decibel levels. The HML method, which requires A and C average. The octave band method, which uses the frequency analysis data. The octave band method is the most effective way of selecting hearing protection. The overall aim should be to reduce noise levels at the ear to between 70 to 75 decibels. Using hearing protection devices that reduce noise at the ear to lower than 70 decibels can create additional safety issues such as difficulties with communication and the inability to hear warning signals. Workers may become isolated from their environment, causing them to remove their hearing protection, which could lead to hearing damage.